The Fujicast is an independent loading zone production. Kev, I've had a very strange postcard. It's um, I really, I'm quite partial. To, this person obviously knows me because I'm quite partial to to macro pictures of mushrooms. Don't know why. It's a thing, Kev. And they've mm. just written it's, it's come from Belgique, so it's Belgian. Um, just a pretty picture and greetings, but it's um, it's the sort of handwriting of somebody that's thought, oh, I forgot to send Neil something, and they just. <laughs> scribbled it out put it in the post and sent it to me it's a beautiful postcard but they signed it with what looks like a dollar sign i don't know who it's i don't know who it's from is it from you no it can't be you're not no, you're not, not from me um, however there was a thread about macro pictures of mushrooms on the facebook group so oh. a bit of detective work might be the order uh, of the have day have you received one as well then no oh, okay no i did however receive you know we mentioned last week that um Stuff I get sent for both of us, <laughs> typically. Uh, I, ne- I never get it. You get it. I doesn't get to you. No. Um, well, uh, just like last year, Pascal, bless him, we were in a uh, Camera Plus shop in Northern Ireland, Cookstown, Northern Ireland, has sent us mm-hmm. some mince pies. And actually, there was a little blue note on it, a nice little card. It said, I'd just like to wish you both a very happy and healthy Christmas. Thank you so much for all the entertainment and info you provide us with all the year through. Pascal, that's very, very kind of you. There was a little post-it note on the mince pies that mm. actually said, for Neil. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I ate them. The Fuji cast. Why did I know you were going to say that, Kev? I knew that was coming. Um, well, I can't, you can't really post them, can you? <laughs> no, you Although can't you did really. post them to us, to me, be to you. Post them to you to via me, me. To you, to me. Oh, well, we were supposed to meet up, but you're just so busy at the moment, Kev. For somebody who's retired, who should be just with their feet up around a swimming pool, it's just impossible to tie you down. Do you know what I did on Monday? Go on. At one o'clock in the morning, I drove the best part of five hours to Grimsby <laughs> to photograph a paint shop being opened. Yeah. And I drove all the way home again and I edited the pictures for the press release. And I never, of course, didn't actually sleep on Sunday night. So I think I got up at half seven Sunday morning, went to bed again. Next time I went to bed was about midnight on Monday night, having driven the best part of 10 hours, done a job, done the editing. And I was actually, just before I went to bed, I was, Gemma was talking to me. <laughs> and uh, it didn't register. And I, I was just like trying, really concentrating hard to yeah, figure out yeah. what she was actually saying. Yeah. And she was like, are you all right? Are you having a stroke? Are you, are you? Okay. And I was just like, uh, I think I need to go to bed. Yeah. I was absolutely exhausted. And bear in mind, like, not so long ago, well, maybe 20 years ago, I used to go on rugby tours and, and we wouldn't sleep for four whole yeah, no, days. Yeah, Kev, you were 14 then. You're, 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 what are you now, 65? I don't know. Yeah, What's I, well, I, feel, I certainly feel it, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Fuji cast. Um, I don't know, uh, the music will have run out by now, almost. Um, you and your letters... Um, the questions that you've sent in either by Facebook or by email to click at fujicast.co.uk there we go that, that's the truncated version of what this show's all about we have to thank first up our sponsor Pick Time uh, if you go to the website pick-time.com it's a brilliant website for showing off your photographic wares selling uh, prints and albums and frames and canvases and well, whatever is available through the various supplies you choose to use um, that's everything's what, available yeah, everything's yes. a, can you get key rings I'm sure key rings would be available would they be I, mean, you have, I, think. I don't know um, you can do key rings, yeah. Can you, um, how's your pick time sales going, Kev? Are yeah, good? all right, actually. Getting a few bits and pieces dripping in now, you know. It's that time of year, isn't it? So, mm. yeah, I'm getting, getting some stuff through the door, so to speak. Yeah. Um, there was a uh, really, a really neat, um, th- so, well, actually, the, the thing I should just say is if you are a pick time subscriber, you really should join the pick time community on Facebook also. Yeah. There's a lot of really good, useful information in there. Yeah. And also people share their tips on how they, they are running their pick time business. And there's some good stuff in there, some really, really interesting, good marketing tips and yeah. what have you in there. So do that. If you are a pick time subscriber, go into the Facebook group because it is ace. Go to pick hyphen time dot com and if you like a, a month's free joy with them then uh, put fujicast all in uppercase uh, when you when you when you join up and you'll get a month free like that kev month free. 
yeah. just like that. Uh, and on that note, it's time to to make the event we're doing at the House of Photography mm. on the second of March publicly available. Now, the the our good old oh, yeah. patrons have had their um, they've had their sniff, they've had their sniff, yeah. And uh, and they've done quite well actually. I, that that rem- so before we we give the details out for that, I and mean, we must we haven't done this for a long time, so it might take me a bit of time. We must do a shout out to all of our new patrons. Um, have you got the list? Is, have you got the quite list? Quite a few now, yeah. Um, since the last time I did this little shout out, anyway. So thank you very much to uh, are you ready, Adam Featherstone, Greg White, Michelle Hook, Janty Geldof, John Lancaster, David Jennings, Jordan Killard, A S. James Holiday, Casey Sisterton, Mike Gorman, Katie Dockins, Stu Haythorne, Shan Tomok, Stuart Chambers, Ian Rawlings, Carl Britt, Nicholas Bernier, Carl Jenkins, Paul Gallagher, and John Anderton. And I'm Kotam Kodbley and all. Yes, so thank you so much. Our children will finally get some Christmas presents this year. Um, and all of those people have had early access to the tickets for the event we are doing at the Futurecast, uh, the event. The future cast but, but, event but, but, at the. I'm still tired. House of Photography, Kev, awesome. in at, in at London, the House of yeah. in London, Covent Garden, where we shall have a day of joyous talks from uh, myself, Neil, yep. Emily Renier, and Mr. Whisper. Mr. We'll Whisper. also be there. Yeah. We'll all be doing an hour's talk. Andreas will be doing a talk on some. Who knows? There might be some new stuff around for him to chat about. You never know. <laughs> um, <laughs> there will be you know opportunity to touch and try all of the stuff in the yeah. Fujifilm House of Photography. There will be drinks. There will be nibbles. There will be a live podcast recording at the end of the day where everybody there will be opening the floor to four questions and then we will nip off to that their pub, to pub. and, uh, I'm and a- have some drinks. I'm a little bit nervous about calling our event a touch and try. <laughs> <laughs> you can touch and uh, that, that does make me chuckle every time. Fuji films say that. Touch, touch and, and try. try. Belfast, t- touch and try. Glasgow, touch and try. Touch and try. Touch and try. How much are we um, how much are we selling tickets for, Kev? Well, so we're going to do an early bird price, uh, which I think well, we haven't actually discussed Did it. We when talk do you think about the early this? bird should what? expire? <laughs> what is the early bird price then, Kev? What we did well, not talk about. So we <laughs> are going I know we yeah, are the price, but when are we gonna expire the see I'm leading them up here. This yeah. is a lead up. When are we gonna expire the early bird? Oh I don't know. Should should it be like first of Jan or first yeah, we week? We do first of Jan. First okay. of Jan. So I oh, know because some people are no, hang on, some people are two weeks be, uh, two weeks behind. So they make it the the make it the um the second week of Jan. Okay. So up until sometime in the second week of January, <laughs> the, uh, you'll be able to get your ticket price for the princely sum of £80. Thereafter, it's going to go up to £90 whole pounds. Yeah. But it'll be worth it. Promise. Whole day. Good fun. And uh, myself, I'm going to be doing a talk on You're doing business. Business, on business yeah. Very important for the start like of New Year. Yeah. My talk is titled, We Were All Born Naked. Oh, I will wear clothes during the, the talk, I promise. <laughs> and uh, Neil, what are you doing your talk on? I'm doing about the marriage of sound and pictures. And not, I mean, it is predominantly a wedding thing, uh, my, my talk, but but it's completely um, user-friendly for whatever kind of photography you practice. Um, Mr. Whisper will, of course, be talking about street photography, won't he? Mr. Whisper will indeed be mm. doing a great talk, and he's going to be calling it storytelling and it, yep. he will be sharing examples of his commercial work in the industry giving an insight into what goes on behind the scenes of professional street photographer workflow discussing the importance of storytelling in photography yep. and emily and will Heidi be a. emily renier will be doing a talk titled the three main pillars of my learning journey so far wow. and she's going to talk about her first few years as a wedding and family photographer and the adventure that has been from attending her first photography show back in 2018 to delivering the latest wedding of family galleries. And uh, yes, that will be a lot of fun. So in order to get tickets, and we are very limited. So I think as far as I'm aware, the Future Film House of Photography will allow us to sit 50, 50. bums yeah. on the seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So if you've got two bums, you're going to have to get two tickets, I'm afraid. What? And uh, <laughs> you can go, you, the only way we can do this is you have to go to my website, kevinmullinsphotography.co.uk, hit the four photographers area and yep. workshops, and you will see it there right at the top. Um, we will, of course, link on the Facebook group and links in the show notes, um, but that's the way to get your tickets. And uh, yes, we are, we're around about third sold. So No uh, way, really? The patrons. My yeah, word. thereabouts. Woof. And I, so, I will say this, Kev, um, that I, I know even though you might have to spend a few pennies finding, and it is in March, so it, it's 
not quite like coming to London for Christmas where where the hotels say, let's put the finger in the air, how much should the prices go up by? Oh, at least double. No, in March it's slightly different, of course. Um, so even though you might have to put yourself up in a little hotel, you are essentially coming to four workshops four so it's one hour workshops from each person and of course andreas doing um his thing as well for 20 pound a piece 20 pound a piece kev 20 quid 20 yep not bad (laughs) very good um i think this postcard may have come from emily renier then because she's belgian she's belgian so that that's obviously it then isn't it yeah. Right. Uh, yes. I don't know. I don't know. That is a, that's a dilemma, that, isn't it? Is it is a dilemma, who, yeah. Who and did I'm, it? I'm really quite sure about things that just arrive without a name on them. It's called unsolicited post. There's a law, you know, well, I know in the UK. But I, I quite like the idea that this has come, knowing that I like macro pictures of mushrooms, so it's not quite so unsolicited. I'll put it there in the it's a mystery pile. Oh, um, right, questions. This is not so much a question. Can I go first? Yeah, I haven't actually had any new questions, so I'm oh. not doing anything today. Our friend, what? Our friend, well, there <laughs> will be questions to read out, Kev, or Facebook. You always say that there's loads on there that you just haven't marked. I know, but that involves me scrolling up. Well, you're going to have to. I'd like to do it from the this recent This is the last one before any... Christmas. At least make an effort. I'm going to play chess. No. Mark <laughs> Dell wrote in, our friend Mark, friend mark yeah and um he said thanks for the podcast obviously to us both i've decided to go completely off grid when out and about but my weapon of telecommunications is now a light phone a light phone too a lifestyle change i feel i shoot with the fujifilm x100s and document my grandchildren regularly i've been the family photographer for many years the older generations have fondly remembered through my cameras over the years and we, uh, and we are the new older generation now. Yeah, 62 uh, is now grandparents. Really? If you get to 62? No. Well, my What's a light phone? Well, so I did say, I wrote back straight away. I said, what's a light phone? And he sent me a link. And the link is all the W's dot the light phone dot com. You might want to put it in so you can. How do you spell light? Well, as in, oh, oh yeah, as in light that we like to photograph with l-i-g-h-t the light that's a good question could have been the other spelling lightphone.co.uk and so you you'll you'll see straight away you've got some birds flying through the air and then, .co.uk or .com oh .com the light phone 2 is a premium minimal phone and everybody's into minimalism now it'll never have social media clickbait news email an internet browser or any other anxiety inducing infinite feed it's an experience we call going light. It's a phone. It calls and texts. There is a headphone jack, Bluetooth, and it could be used as a personal hotspot. But that's it. It's a phone that you can phone from. Mark has left the universe of social. What do you think about well, a phone that just phones, Kev? That's a bit well, strange, yeah. isn't it? I mean, there's, you can go to... They sell them in WH Smith's, the Nokia's. They're about nine quid. A new Nokia in WH Smith for a small amount uh, of money? Just a handheld thing with big buttons and, a, oh. and a, just rings. Oh. Um, I do... I, in, in theory, though, I do like the essence of this idea. And, in fact, my granddad, not my granddad, the kid's granddad, mm. has done the same thing. He's, he's, he's got one of those Nokias, and so he can no longer do WhatsApp, can't do anything. However, yeah. which, which does sound quite nice, however, it won't be quite so nice when you're trying to buy said grandchildren presents in, yeah. I don't know, Argos or whatever, and your bank needs to send you a confirmation that it's you making the transaction. And, and you you'll can't be like, do it, no. Can't do it, oh no. no. Um, so it's, it, you know, we are tied to those things and, uh, I, you know, I'm not, not saying it's wrong to, to go down that route at all. I would like to do it. However, I think I'm, I have too many things that I need yeah, on there. Yeah. Um, and you know, obviously the other option is to just delete social media apps. <laughs> well, there is that you don't have to use all the bits that you have on it, but I wonder whether it's just because you feel like, well, it's there, I should use it. Yeah, perhaps. I don't know. But yeah, whatever. I, you know, I, I'm all for this off grid type thing. However, yeah. I think for me personally, yeah. I need to know when my credit card is about to, you know, go over its <laughs> limit. And <laughs> I need to know when I'll be t- spending too much at the co op. We have a phrase in our, in our household now. It's called not for me. Um, which is uh, which was born of I think I think it was um, it was my brother-in-law who uh, who was invited to some of the, the the family message went out on WhatsApp and he just said not for me and that was it 
So now if you if you don't want to give any reason why you're not doing something, you just say, not for me, and it's universally understood. We've even bought him. I bought him a T-shirt for Christmas. just says, not for me, on the front of it. <laughs> right, questions. Um, have you got one you could find on Facebook? Yeah, and I'm going to have to go back six whole weeks, right. which is disgusting. <laughs> We've had no questions in the Facebook group. You are group. joking. Are we going to have to do another one of those, that's it, the podcast is done? Yeah, moments. that's it. I'm going on strike. That's it. I'm going to go and tra- join the train drivers. Any questions? Um, what? Any- oh, we will go back. We'll go back to six weeks ago. Ole Overgaard says, QQ, don't you just love that Fuji seems to have abandoned the terrible clutches that were on many of the first generation lenses? I never liked them, he says. And I sold both the 16mm f1.4 and the old 23mm 1.4 for mostly that reason. Yeah. It'd get the new 18mm and 23mm instead. Well, so yeah, but I there's, there's t- a I difference can... between first gen and second gen. Obviously, it improves, doesn't it? Well, well, yes, but they also, he's right, they don't have the, that clutch mechanism, which was the manual focus, yeah. pull push. I quite like that, though. <laughs> uh, I would say that I have had uh, approximately a million people. <laughs> On my street photography workshops, <laughs> who have gone? I can't. My my lens isn't focusing, and it's it's been because of that. Oh, well, so many the, people bought yeah. those lenses and didn't even know that that's how you got the manual focus well, into operation. Do you operation. think that's why it went then? Do you think people thought, "Well, we're fed up of explaining this"? Yeah, I, th- I I mean, I'm guessing they did it because some of the cameras didn't have. I, well, I mean, one of them on one of those silly XH2 cameras that don't have a manual focus stop it um, button <laughs> would be brilliant. You know, I think they should bring them back. If you've got an X-H2, they should bring back X- X-H2-specific lenses with the clutch. Yeah, but you just press a button, Kev, and it's easy. No, it's, no, that's ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. It's it, easy, it, it, Kev. It's, it's I've too put slow. It, I've put it, and it's not slow. It's no slower than slow. looking at the too camera, slow. finding too that slow. small button and slow. moving too it. Slow. It's too You're slow. like my kids. Who will, when we go to argue, they will just keep saying the same thing. Too slow. And they not know it me. winds me not up. Not for me. Not for me. Not for me. Actually, no, you said not for me, so that's fine. No more discussion. No more discussion. There we go. Over to you. Yeah. You, Ollie. James Souls has sent us an email. Uh, it's one tech and one life advice question. Life advice, Kev. Mm-hmm. Right. Go tech first. I know what you're going to say immediately. I hope you gents are well. Thank you again for the great podcast. You're very kind, James. Just two questions today. Oh, of course, James. What, how? It was It was a couple of episodes ago, wasn't it? That he had, didn't he have about seven or eight? Or quite, I mean, it, it literally went across... It took up the last third of the yes. program, didn't it? It was the James James Soul it was, show. It was. Um, so one of them's to me, Neil. How are your XH cameras? I love mine, but there is a niggle. I shoot primarily with an XH2 S18 mil and XH2 33 mil. Nice setup. With another XH2 56 mil. What is this guy won the lottery? So he's he's got just an XH2, just as a kind of a backup. I'll just drag it out if I need it with a 56 mil. On all these cameras, from time to time, I will have a lockup. When this happens, I see a frozen image through the viewfinder, but nothing else works. The camera is completely unresponsive. Even the power button does nothing. I have to pop the battery in and out to get it to work again. Also, from time to time, they simply do not turn on, and I've had to pop the battery out. I have always had these issues across these three cameras, and no firmware updates seem to fix it. I can go a few weddings or weeks without it happening and then, bam, it happens twice. Or a mix of both issues on the same day. Do you have any issues like these? What ideas or any ideas what it could be? Right. When I get to Jan, he says, I'm going to take them all in for a checkup. Just in case it matters, I use decent memory cards that are the, on the approved list and I don't feel the buffer. So, Kev, I know instantly you're going to say, well, buy an X-T5, aren't you? That's going to be your answer to this question. Um, are I they will- all X-H2s? Yes, they are. Uh, XH2S. Oh, and he has two XH2s and one XH2S. Okay, but it's happening across either of the of the models. So um, what what I would say is a couple of things to just ensure that you're doing right, James, and that is make sure that the memory cards that you are using. I know you said they are on the approved list, but make sure that you have the same size memory cards in the dual slots. So if you're using two five six gigs. Make sure you have two two five six gigs. Make sure they're the same speed. This is this is this has happened a few times in the past. Okay, with the XH two, you have a CF Express and yeah. a SD card That's right. slot. Yes. So I would I would suggest making sure they are the same read speed. Um, they're both UHS twos, um, and they're both from the same manufacturer. Ah, see, I never uh, thought about that because what James is saying here has happened to me over and over. 
On your XH2s? Yep. On my <laughs> XH2S, I have had exactly the problem James talks about. And the only way to solve it is by popping the battery out and popping it back in again. And uh, yeah. and the worst time for that to happen is, of course, when you're trying to do a recessional. And it happened to me during a recessional. Fortunately, I've got quite good at popping the battery out, back in again. And it was you shouldn't a, have to and be it was doing a, that, And you? it was a long aisle. So I was lucky that day. But it wouldn't. that's not perfect. That's not, that's not a good thing, is it? Absolutely not. Definitely not. So that's the only thing I can think of is some kind of memory card mismatch. Mm. But... Um, I haven't I haven't read or heard too many people having those issues with the XH2s, yeah. but you and James both have, and yeah. so there obviously yeah. is something there. There's something going on. I'll, I'll uh, check that that uh, because I know my my cards will be mismatched in that that respect. I've always had mismatched cards though, Kev. I don't, you know, that explains a lot. Well, <laughs> I've never had the issue before. It's never happened to me before. No, I, I mean, I, it, it shouldn't be happening. You know, that's 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 the fact of it. And if it is happening a lot, then yeah, you need to speak mm. to Future Film. But that's the only thing. That's one thing I'm always very conscious of, and I always have been, even mm. when I was shooting in the Canon cameras that finally came along with dual card slots. You know, I've always made sure that I've used the same it's brand the same and the brand, same, same size and the same yeah. speed okay. in both slots. And of course, with an XT5, you're using two. Uh, SDs effectively, aren't you? So yeah, they're they're two SDs, so yeah. it's a bit it's cheap. Those CF mm. Express cards are expensive, oh, aren't they? So. I had to sell a kidney for one. Well, you bought mine off me, I, I think. Did. When I, when I, I did. threw my XH twos at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Did you actually sell it? Sell it? Or have you still got it in your magic cupboard? No, it went to MPB. I needed to sell it to get the XT five. Oh. So was, I had it until the X, when the XT5 came along. That was it, you sold it. I, I thought, what have I done? What mm. have I done? What, Mullins, what have you done? You run before you can walk again. Mm. So I yeah, sold the XH2. Well, for I what it's worth. I had the XH2 or the XH2S now. Well, for what it's worth, I think you have the S, by the way. I, I, I For what it's worth, I love the XH2S. Terrific camera. I like the grip on it. Everything about it, ergonomically, love it. And that's the only problem I have with it is the one that James has just described. But it could be a, an imbalanced card, or just an, just an could imbalanced be. photographer, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, he asked for some life advice as well. I'm really keen to go on the 2nd of March to your thing, but I have a stumbling block. Any advice appreciated. The stumbling block is that we have a baby due on the 3rd of March. Now, <laughs> I've told the wife that I'd like to go to London and get drunk with a camera crew. See, that, that's not officially the way we're advertising it, James. Also, that I may possibly end up staying in London completely smashed after a giant Indian meal. She did not seem impressed. I can't understand why. Any advice? <laughs> I'm not getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> Do we really need to answer this one? I know, James. He's a very nice guy, and I'm, so I know very well that he will be um, in the hospital with his good wife. Yeah. And- their he, baby. he did say, my actual question atop this is, will you be videoing all the talks so that uh, those who can't get access can get them for a small fee? I don't know whether we will. Sometimes no. that changes the whole dynamic, doesn't no, it? No, we definitely won't I think be. this is a live thing. Definitely won't be. He said it'll give him something to watch on the 3 a.m. bottle feeds. Can you mm-hmm. imagine going back to those days, Kev? How many of the 3 a.m. bottle feeds did you do? None. What? Never did any of them. I thought no. you were a modern man. No, I didn't do any of them. I did. I slept in the dog basket, like a dog, on the yeah. basket on the floor next to the bed. But I didn't do any of those. No. Where did the dog yeah, sleep? Well, oh, around my feet, all over the place. I don't know, bloody <laughs> stinky things. Um, no, I didn't. I. Um, I mean, it was right in the heart of my busy wedding stuff. Right. So invariably, I would either be away, exhausted, tired, whatever, grumpy. So, um, and I have to say, uh, this isn't a like statement on bottle feeding or anything, but neither of the kids had bottles. Neither of them. I so, not. You yeah, was, they went you, all natural you, all the way was, through. Well, you can always, um, you can always de- yes. decant, Express. decant it, exp- decant it. <laughs> Express. <laughs> it's a fine Italian wine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, good luck, James, for the arrival yes, of, of Baba. Uh, what an exciting adventure. Good Call luck. it Kevin. Call it Kevin? Yeah. What, what if it's a female? Even if it's a girl. Yeah? Yeah. Kavina. Yeah. See, or I, Neil. Or, ne- yeah, or Nelly, <laughs> with my, my spelling. We would have called my uh, my youngest, we were going to call him after the midwife, because she was brilliant. It was a complicated birth, the second one. Really complicated. That's a ridiculous name. After the midwife, after the midwife James. No, no, after, uh, no. Did I say James? 
No, after no. the midwife, Alice. <laughs> Alice that, oh, well, actually, his, the kids aren't. I hang know, on yeah. a minute. Or whatever name you want to call it. But uh, Alice was the midwife. And we were going to call Thomas Alice if because we didn't know Thomas's gender. So before before he arrived into this world, and so he arrived as Thomas, obviously, and uh, so he wasn't called Alice. And I, ha- Alice, 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 listen, love. Alice, Alice, Alice. Who the? <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going with this. So we made a mistake one day of talking about this at the dinner table, and um, our eldest. His ears pricked up somewhat when we said we were going to call you Alice. And that's what Jack calls him. Oh, no. <laughs> He's trying to wind him up. Uh, well, not Did so he still much, call him that? Not so much these days, but it, it was just for a little while. There was a, there was a bit of teasing going on there. I think he's forgotten. He doesn't listen to this podcast, so it won't remind him. Uh, right, go on. Question from Facebook. I'll go again. Yeah, sure. Hang on. I have to scroll We've up again. solved James's problems, I think. Yes. Stephen Anker says, Hi, gents. In the past, Fujifilm have made prosumer versions of some cameras, X-T30 for the X-T3, notably no X-T40. Mm. Do you think there will be a version for the marvellous X-T5? Hmm. This won't be one of the announcements to come next year, will it? I have no idea. I, I, I literally have no idea what's coming next year, obviously. But mm. if you read the rumour sites, they seem to think there's three cameras coming next year. Mm. Um, but as Andreas quite rightly says... Rumours aren't always true. Otherwise, they would be news. So there you go. So I just like know. a gov- um, government spokesperson. What are the <laughs> rumoured three then, Kev? Because I haven't read these. Ru- well, I know one of them, one of the rumours. I don't know. I don't know. I just, that's what somebody posted on the Facebook group, actually, right. this morning, I think, something oh. about new cameras next year. And there was kind of all kinds of speculations and what have you. And that's when Andreas came up with his beautiful line that I just re- nicked off him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. And the fact there was no XT40 would imply that there won't be an XT50, right. but who knows? I, I like literally don't know. What's the one I've got now for the film in? Where is it? XT, um, <laughs> don't know. One of that one with the new one they made with the vlog mode. Anyway, I think that might have replaced, looks like that might have replaced the XT oh, okay. mini range. XS10, XS20 they did, didn't they? Otherwise it gets really confusing, doesn't it? Well, you, you, what, which one did you use for vlogging? You used one for a while, didn't you? XM1. I don't know. I think I had an XT30, actually. No, no, it's one of the XM what? ones. XS10. I uh, never XM. had an XS10. I've got XS an XS20. XM, XS. Oh, I thought yeah. you did. No, XS20. It's great. And I, I, I use it for my YouTube stuff now. Hmm. Uh, James Turley has written in. Hi, guys. And then this definitely is one for you because it has the magical two letters and one number X-T5 involved. I've recently purchased a Fujifilm X-T5. I have an 18 to 55 2.8 stroke 4 kit lens. And I see on the, the, the website, the Fuji website, that it's not fully supported in resolving 40 megapixel images produced on this camera. I would value your opinion and input, Kev as I've not Mm. seen any major flaws when it comes to taking images for social media. However, I also shoot landscapes from time to time, uh, only for my own consumption, mind, but I'd like to print them out large in A3. What, uh, or would the the lack in resolution be that noticeable? Or am I just pixel peeping? Thank you for the podcast. I'm based in NZ and love listening to you guys on my way to work in Wellington. It's James, James Turley. Yeah, so uh, absolutely. Uh, I, it, yes, so it's on the Fujifilm website that they do not technically resolve all of those full 40 megapixels, uh, megapixels 40.1 megapixels, if you want to be precise. But I really don't think anybody could like notice the difference, mm. certainly when you print it, etc. I think they're just covering their bases because the um, the newer lenses are built to resolve against that sensor, against the 40 megapixel sensor, um, and probably has a few more fairies peddling and some jiggery pokery inside mm. doing its thing. Um, but yeah, l- literally, uh, I mean, I've u- I used, when I did have that X-H2S, whatever it was, uh, you know, I used the original 56 1.2 lens and the original 23 1.4 lens. I never, not at any point did I look at a picture and think, that doesn't look quite right. Mm. Mm. Can I have an, another cheeky resolution one from Mike Marin? Uh, sort of marry these together in a kind of Marin way. Kevin Neal, yeah, after hear photographers talk about the advantage of larger megapixel sensors so that the image quality is preserved when cropping. I don't think I understand this. Clearly, the total number of megapixels in the image will be reduced when cropping because some of the image is removed. But does the pixel density change? Is the image quality really affected? And why? 
Mike Marin, who is in Oakville. Uh, yeah, I don't know the science behind it, but I can tell you right now, if you if you took exactly the same picture on a on the, like a an X100 original 16 megapixel sensor cameras, yeah. and you took one with a 40 megapixel sensor cameras, and you cropped into exactly the same spot, the uh, quality on the 40 megapixel sensor crop would be yeah, much well, better. A very good question. Yeah. Then why? It's a good don't... question. I don't know the answer. I don't know. I don't know the technicalities behind it because I'm just a poor. <laughs> bloke from Wales, but I, I, we need to get the second <laughs> brainiest person in the world on the show, don't we? Who's the second? Carl. Carl, who's the first? Oh, well, we've had this conversation before, haven't we? I don't believe Jeremy you have- Vine. Who? Jeremy Vine? He's the, he's the brainiest person in the world, I think. No, I think Tim Vine is because of all mm-hmm. those jokes. He can do... Like, this is exactly the conversation we had. <laughs> <laughs> I exactly think it is. This is now beginning to... Uh, my memory, my cogs are turning, Kev. I think we have had this conversation before. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have anyway. uh yeah so so basically i don't know why but it does there we are there's your answer mike uh, no idea but it does just yeah. accept it and love it for what it is yes kev there we go well we're rattling through these kev we really are we really are we've we've still got a little bit of time left so from your facebook please right uh kirk kirk vogel says afternoon lads here's one for you why aren't we using Bluetooth headphones for audio monitoring sound XH2 shooter for video? So not like I'm asking for that much. Cheers, Kirk. Kirkvogel.com. Kirk with a K. That's a really good question because actually that would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? Particularly if you're just going to shove a couple of earbuds in. So would I mean, there I'm, be not, a slight I'm, not, I'm not the audio file that may, you are. Maybe delay. Maybe this is to do with delay. Yes, this is this is exactly what I was about to say. I I I think there's more chance of interference and delay if you're using a wireless protocol for monitoring audio from a camera. Yeah. It's the, you know, you don't really get high-end studio monitoring cans that are bluetooth either. They're nearly always wired, aren't I've they? I've never worked in a studio with bluetooth. Um no. uh, and I've worked in quite a few nice radio studios. It's always wired. Yeah. That's my guess and your yeah. guess as well by the sounds of it. I think it is, yeah. Dave Queenan. Kevin mentioned uh, oh, that he... <laughs> what do you mean, hold on? What are you doing? No, I said, uh-oh. Oh, what have no, I done wrong no. now? Oh, no. Well, I don't think you're in trouble. He's after f- some advice. Kevin mentioned that he recently bought a standy uppy desk. I've been thinking about getting one of these as well as I work at my desk all day. Any recommendations? First of all, actually, standy uppy desks, um, and you've got the one that powers up and down, haven't you? Very, very fancy thunderbolts and lightning. Uh, they're very good for your health. Because if you stand up all day, now what was that? I read this. What you might know this, uh, Kev. What's 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 the um, what's the amount of calories you burn in a day if you stand up at your desk as opposed to sit down? Why would I know that? Well, I, I thought you might because you've got the standy uppy desk. Let me look this up while you're giving a, a very well structured response to why you have one, which one you use, and how much it's changed your life. Okay. Well, the one I'm using is a. It's it's called Kaimeng. K A I M E N G. I got it from that there Amazon. I got it on a Black Friday deal, so I got it for about 128 pounds, and I've just looked. Well, that's nothing. Current, wow. Currently 340, 359 pounds. Yeah. So Black Friday was my my saviour, um, and it's it's actually really good. It's got built-in plug sockets yeah. on the desk. It's got built-in USB ports. It's also got a built-in wireless thing. You can put your phone on, and it wirelessly does it nice and big it's got cable management goes up goes down solid really bloody heavy um and yeah i really like it i I bought it mostly because i wanted a new space for my filming yeah um and i didn't want to have to keep tidying my my working desk um but yeah it's it's good um i was doing some stuff yesterday standing up there um i've got a new monitor as well on there now so i can just i just pop my slip my laptop into that and boom bob your uncle how many how many hours do you stand a day is it do you think oh i don't know not enough well it says here generally speaking you can burn between 100 and 200 calories per hour um if you're standing at a standy uppy desk well, I didn't Ooh. say the standy uppy desk thing but uh, so that means if i stand all day if i stand for eight hours yeah. then i can have four pints on the way home well <laughs> and it and it means i haven't done anything i haven't lost any Not quite calories. sure that's the way it works but roughly speaking yes actually awesome. although actually it says when when you um when you're sitting down uh you bur- you're still burning 60 to 130 calories an hour 
So actually, there's not a huge amount of difference. I thought there would so be. If a- you're having a pint of Guinness in the pub, yeah, and a pint of Guinness, I think, is about 800 calories. Is it 800? If you're no, sitting down, no. I don't know. I might just be guessing, but it seems like it's a lot. How many calories? Are, 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 while you're doing that, I mean... So if you're sitting down and you have an 800-calorie drink, yes. you're sitting down and you're actually burning 160 calories just yes. by sitting down. Plus, I reckon you burn 50 to 60 calories by lifting your arm up and down. Yeah. It's basically half the calories for nothing, isn't it? That's great news. Well, do you want the good news? I don't know what yeah. sort of drink you're drinking at 800 calories. I would imagine that's one of those super sort of strawberry milkshakey things with about everything you can throw at the top of it but it's uh, uh, uh the amount of calories in a pint of guinness is 210 oh so basically <laughs> by the time you've moved your hand up and down what <laughs> taking on any calories when you're drinking a pint of guinness if you're sitting down and it's 160 calories just sitting down yeah and it's 210 calories in the entire drink. There's yeah. got to be calories involved in moving your hand up and down to your mouth. So basically, you can drink as much Guinness as you want and you won't get fat. No, well, there's, you're, still, there's, you're still in a... You're not in a deficit and you're, you're, and you're still the wrong side in terms of the positive... Only a bit. Well, yeah, only a bit. But what you want to do is you want to sit down, have a couple of sips, get up, do about 10 star jumps, sit down and do another couple of sips i mean you might get people looking at you in a strange way but that's the way to cancel it out kev <laughs> so there must be some beers some nice beers mm. not, not like cheap lagers or anything that are less than 160 calories in a pint and which means that you actually lose weight well, when you're going to the pub skinny lager here we go is 149 calories well, there you go drink as much as that as you want <laughs> and you'll lose weight yeah. Even just sitting down. Oh, no. Do it standing up and you're going to, well, you might as well just yes. cancel your gym membership. It's like going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> In no way, shape or form. Oh. That's the best news I've heard. Well, I think that's the best news I've ever heard. <laughs> In my yeah, life. I'm not quite sure this all works the way you're suggesting it does, but there we go. Right, go on, Facebook. Uh, Facebook, right. Adam says, Kev, why are you so fat? <laughs> 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 Oh, dear. Uh, they don't I, really. oh dear. that reminds me of, of uh, a response i've just put out a listener survey for for the photo walk kev and one of the mails i got back uh, one of the the survey responses uh, <laughs> was uh more uh, was more it was essentially just do interviews because you don't have personality <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I thought I might frame that, but my <laughs> my friend Gary King, when he was uh when he was uh, on Radio One, he got and I'm going to have to bleep this, but I'll say it so that the timing works. He got a letter that came out of the blue one day that said, "Gary King, I can't listen to you because you are a <laughs> oh my word." <laughs> <laughs> he framed it and he's and he put it in his front room. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. So rude, but I tell you what, though, if you went back through your YouTube, you'd have a couple of classics, wouldn't oh, you? Oh, I've had some awful things said you to really me. You really have. You have to laugh, yeah. though, don't you? Otherwise, yeah. you'd cry. I had somebody was going on with my clothes. Did the, last, the video I did last week for the XT5 review. You weren't wearing that fluffy thing again, were you? No. No. I, I walk, well, I, I, I did. I walk, do wear that. It's that time I know of you year. do. I I every, every time I see you, you're wearing that fluffy thing. It's like, it's I love like it. you I love need it. to you need to release it as merch, Kev, I'm telling you. He was like, uh, why are you wearing pyjamas? I don't come here to watch you in your pajamas. <laughs> like, and it's not my pajamas, mate. I like. I know I'm a bit, bit, uh, bit on the loose side, but I, I wouldn't wear my pajamas live on the on internet. On internet, anyway. Next, next time I do a video, I might wear my pajamas just to see if anybody. Makes <laughs> yeah, it. that's it. Wear anyway, your, ju- wear your judo outfit, Kev. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. It. I might just do a judo, my judo yeah. suit. Yeah, that's a really good idea, actually. Yeah. Uh, Adam Ramjean says, "Hi guys, question from me: How do you clean your cameras?" And then he he, uh, he puts in brackets. I guess Kevin doesn't, so maybe that's a question from Neil. <laughs> fairy uh, liquid, usually. I just I, 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 I douse it underneath, run the fairy liquid over it. I get one of those scourers that we use for, for, the, uh, for the pots and pans. Done. Comes up beautifully. Different colour, mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yes. I, I actually do, Kev. You're gonna. You're gonna. Your eyes are gonna raise here. I know. I can almost see your eyebrows. I actually spend time with my cameras with a cotton bud, and I find this a cathartic experience. By the way, cleaning around all the little dials every now and then. Right. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, have you, um, uh, Adam have you never had that say. experience, Kev. No. With a bit uh, of white spirit, Kev. A little bit of white spirit. Not too much. Not too much. In fact, if you can use the blue one, that's better. And then just 
And you go, ah, oh, it comes up beautifully, Kev. Uh, Adam goes on to say, my well-used X100F has a tight on-off switch. But even worse than that, last weekend, the ISO dial got stuck. So now I'm oh. stuck on auto ISO. Oh, dear. I should add, only really use it for street photography. So no sand or mud around. Mm. Relevant. Other than that, the only issue with the camera is that it's six inches, is the six inches behind it. Boom. boom. Uh, um, <laughs> and he says, a little shout out for the Dado Moriyama exhibition at the photography gallery. Oh, yeah. The photographer's gallery in London. I don't know whether that's still on, actually. And bear in mind, I'm going back to seven I think weeks. it is. I think it is because Giles has invited me to go to it in the okay new, good new i've got yeah. the book i've got the retrospective book yeah um I, uh oh i'm in london on this friday actually for a workshop really? and i'm oh. might, might be in early enough yeah i might oh. pop in but yes photographer's gallery data mariama exhibition will be ace i do not clean my cameras adam neil um <laughs> when everybody else is out partying and spends time talking to his cameras the little earbuds and uh <laughs> the auto wire so yeah that's a bummer yeah, it is. Are you going to go and see the Tish Murtha film, by the way? Oh, uh, Anna invited me to that, actually, a couple oh, of weeks ago. Did but I she? Couldn't make oh, it. I yeah. see. Right, OK. Didn't um, invite me. I see. No, well, I think we, we were just chatting as she was kind of, like, on organising it yeah. the next day. So she's like, oh, you should come. And I was like, I can't. Oh, right. Um, but yes, I know a lot of people have, have mentioned that, actually. Yeah. It, I think, from what I've heard, what I've read... I think it's a it's a must not miss film. We will link to these uh, exhibitions and films, by the way, in mm. the show notes for those people who are thinking. Just get on with it, you dozy old men. And talking of films, I'm going to go and see um, the Napoleon one. Um, but the choice came up because we're taking the kids and um, with another family who have a slightly younger daughter, and the choice was go and see Wonka or go and see Napoleon. And I said, I want to see I want to see Wonka. <laughs> Everybody said, you can't see Wonka, not at your age. I think it looks really good. I think it looks amazing. I'd go and see that. What would you see? Would you see Napoleon or Wonka? Wonka. Yeah. See, that's why I said Kev. But they looked at me like I was mad. No. Well, I think Napoleon wasn't, didn't Napoleon do, he sold, he sold the USA, like, I think it's like a quarter or maybe a third or something of the USA land he sold to them for like 300 and. $50 Fifty million dollars or something, oh. and it's clearly worth a lot more than that. So I think he made a big mistake. I think he made lots of mistakes, but there we yeah. go. Um, Darren Goldstein. This might be the last one, Kev, and that's it for twenty twenty three. Let me just have a look at the timer. Mm. We're not doing another show. Mm, well, do, no, well, do you want to do one between Christmas and New Year? We're not. We're not scheduled to, Kev. No, no. Well, then we won't. No. Merry Is Christmas. It? Bye. <laughs> Darren Goldstein. Hello, Kev. Hi, Neil. Me again. Uh, years ago, I said, did we do one from Darren already today? No, don't think we did, did we? I don't think so. Years ago, I set up a system where I exported DNG files to a Dropbox folder containing keepers or selects. These were meant to house all my portfolio-worthy images, which I could later sort through in Lightroom and use for my website, etc. At the time, using DNG seemed to make the most sense. I've oh god I must get this software Kev because this keeps coming up and neither you or I use it. I've since started using C1 into my workflow in addition to Lightroom. My question is what file format do you think is best for archiving? DNG gave me the flexibility down the road but uh, that was only of using all Adobe. Now with C1 it adds a new wrinkle. I don't want to use TIFFs as file sizes are humongous. Yeah. I'm stuck using high-res JPEGs. Thanks a bunch for a great year of keeping us all entertained once again. Th- uh, th- I was going to say thank you, but no, he didn't say that. He said cheers, which is, um, in an eggnog way, more appropriate for this part of the season. So what should he use, Kev? I mean, I don't know why you'd use C1 and Lightroom. Why didn't you just choose one or t'other? I don't know. Well, so as far as I'm aware, I, and I can't imagine this is not the case, but I'm caveating this with the fact that I don't use it, so I might be wrong. Yeah. Capture One surely, surely supports DNG files. Has to. If it doesn't, then I, I'm hearing a lot of negativity stuff about Capture One, and they've changed. They went from promising that they would never be subscription based to yeah. boom, boom subscription based. They've now removed. Was that, the is that true, by the way? Because I think I edited that out of the last one because I was a bit yeah, it's wary. True. It's, it's true. They've they've just announced that they've removed. They're removing the Capture One Express software, mm-hmm. and all kinds of other things are happening there. Um, however, I mean, that's the idea. I, I know for a fact it's a very good editing suite and lots of people use it, but I would be really, 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 mm. really surprised mm. if it doesn't support DNG files. 
but going back to the original um the embryonic stages of that question if you if you like with mm-hmm. the uh, the question about dngs the original so adobe took on the dng file format and it was always meant to be a open file format i.e it wasn't meant to make adobe any money they were going to basically be the the curators of the standard to keep everything kind of open and to a certain extent they are and they've done it and you know you do you have the adobe dng converter most people assume that adobe is um the parent the owner of, of the dng standard they never as far as i'm aware and the last time i looked at this was was several years ago admittedly they never took that kind of final step to make it purely of open to everybody as a as a kind of open format if you like however i think they're pretty liberal with its with its uh, flexibility and use and almost everything supports dngs um so i would i i, I yeah dngs if capture one does not support dngs then you'll eat your hat i will oh yes I'll do something like that. You'll marry yeah. Monty. <laughs> uh, I'll, um, mm, no. Yeah. Maybe Come not. on, capture one. Support the NGs. <laughs> yeah. We, um, oh, by the way, um, a couple of plugs each, because Christmas time, of course, we're out there, aren't we, with our with our hats, Kev, on the street, just trying to make a bit of pennies for, for Albie and Rosa and Jack and Thomas and Alice. <laughs> um we've uh, we got a couple <laughs> we got a couple of things each that uh go on you, you've got your your presets by the way kev spot on plug them come on plug them i've just looked up capture one and it does support dngs right okay <laughs> that's good there you go <laughs> um don't swerve the question or or, or the suggestion well uh, plug your yes, presets so, kev come on come on come on oh well i'm not going to talk too much about them because I've, I've talked about them in the past but what i, I will just re summarize the talk on the 2nd of march right. um you're like a politician Neil, kev you're like a politician em- <laughs> emily <laughs> and mr whisper will be yeah. doing talks there will be a live podcast recording of course 2nd of march you can find the link to book your ticket um for which there are limited spaces now on my website kevinmonnesphotography.co.uk go to the workshop section and you can you can just pop in and buy the ticket and while you're there if you want you can look at my presets too yes. there we go okay. since you mentioned booking a place i'm going to mention a book i've done my first book now kev this is not like your x100 book which which um was on the shelves um which i still have a copy in the loo which i love kev uh, you've never signed it i used to sign it i've got an ebook kev all about um why 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 we do photography and also sketchbooking. Uh, so there's pictures that I've made sketchbooking. Plus through the book, a ske- like drawing. What do you mean? No, 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 no. Uh, well, I call. Well, I'll come back to that. Um, and then uh, people like Joel Meyerowitz and, and uh, other photographers. Um, I think Ed Cashy. He's either in there or is about to put him in there, just very quickly before it goes to publish. But um, so it'll be out Monday when this this show comes out. They've they've done their why and you know what what photography is in in terms of. Um, their life and uh, when I say sketchbooking that's why I call my something and nothing pictures Kev I, I call them my sketchbookers and because it's you know part of the photo walk podcast I think people have become used to that so when I go out with a camera I, 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 I like to think that I'm sketchbooking life Kev I was never very good at drawing I was okay at drawing unless you wanted me to draw a face and then they took on a decidedly average look but sketch, sketchbooking through life, just, you know, sometimes making a picture of something on the floor, which is a something and nothing. It's not going to be a big picture. It's not a massive Vista picture. It's a sketchbook of life. So my book is out, and you can get it on the photowalk.show website. So we've done, a, we've done a plug each. Looking forward to 2nd of March, Kev. Is Gemma going to come over? I don't know. I haven't asked her. Well, please. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, you do I, still I, talk, I, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 doing I'm hoping she'll come to the yeah. I'm to this either as well mine to the um photography show. I'm doing a talk at the photography show oh. on the Monday, I think. Right. Not for Fuji film, just on the, one of the stages. Oh, as as Kev. As, yeah, as Kev. That's nice. And and I'm going to be re- I'm going to be stick thin because all I'm going to do between now and then is drink Guinness sitting down. Well, I was going to say what's your new resolution going to be and mine was going to be buy a standy up desk and drink as much Guinness as I possibly can. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Any new re- resolutions, Kev? Or, or? Yeah, I have actually got some, you know, 2023 has been a horrific year. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, just my news resolution is just to make it a bit better <laughs> next year. Yeah, it's been a tough year at times, hasn't it, personally, with everything going on? Yeah, so uh, yeah, hopefully it'll just be a, a nicer year. We'll kick 23 into touch and welcome 24 in. I remember doing that in 2019. The kids, that was the first year they stayed up to midnight. I said, come on, it's a brand new decade. Look at this. What's gonna? It's going to be amazing. Look, look at the adventure coming up. And then they brought us COVID. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyway, look, Kev, have a great Christmas. Yeah, you too. Love and, to the family. Yeah, and same to yours. And, uh, and there'll be a, a new edition coming up in the new year. Happy Christmas, Kev. Happy Christmas. Oh. The Fujicast is an independent Loading Zone production. Email the show with your questions and words of wisdom to click at fujicast.co.uk. Email any complaints and political nonsense to our wives who will deal with your comments in their own good time and in their own good way. 